All over the country, in our towns and cities, is a hidden resource. Long before Sheffield was the steel city, it was a medieval city. And these street signs aren't just names, they're clues, evidence of a secret connecting past, present and future. It's called heritage. It's the historical, economic, sociological story of a place. It's anything that gives people a sense of identity in the present. In the 17th century, Sheffield Castle was completely demolished. The only visible thing that survived are these street names. Now this whole area is undergoing a new phase of development and I want to show you how we can use the castle's heritage to regenerate this part of the city. This is Castlegate Programme Director, Simon Ogden. Morning, Simon. Morning, John. Nice to see you. And you. Simon's leading Sheffield City Council's efforts to regenerate Castlegate. OK, so you're looking at the site of the Castle Market, which has been there since the 1920s and which was demolished in 2014. But before that, it's where Sheffield Castle was for about 600 years. And then after that, this was the centre of town, really. It was the kind of centre of local government, of the courts, of the markets. There were quite quirky things like a bowling green being here. So there's all that kind of um, social history that has been almost completely forgotten. So something that kind of encapsulates the heritage of the city of Sheffield on one spot. Yes, exactly. I think most people, even people that live in Sheffield's conception of Sheffield is it was invented in the Industrial Revolution. And so... Steel City. Yeah, Steel City is what, is what we constantly refer to. And it's important, I think, for people's self-identity, the identity of the city, to know about that history that happened before the Industrial Revolution and for that to be part of our identity now. People have huge expectations of rediscovering the castle and we have to kind of manage those quite carefully because we're not going to find Camelot but there is a really interesting story. Castlegate is in some ways a part of the city centre that's lost its role and in order to re-establish that new role we need to make it into a distinctive place again and so the kind of the story of the place is a really important ingredient. So in order to regenerate the site, I have two key questions to answer. What's the nature of the heritage of this site? And secondly, how can we best deploy that heritage to affect regeneration? The best place to start investigating the nature of that heritage is actually to look back into the past. The Museum of Sheffield Archives is a treasure trove of artefacts from across Sheffield, just waiting to reveal their secrets. There have been three previous excavations on Sheffield Castle, all of them contributing to a vast archive of documentary records, maps, plans and artefacts such as clay pipes, pottery, belt buckles, coins, keys, knives, pins, even a cannonball. But the archive shows us more than just the items typically associated with a castle, which I've been working to reveal. People tend to think of castles as being about, about knights and chivalry, uh, but Sheffield Castle was every bit as much about ordinary people, and that's testified nowhere better than in these shoes. Leather shoes preserved in the moat, worn by ordinary people in Sheffield, in this case worn so much by an ordinary person in Sheffield that they wore a hole uh, in, in the sole. On the other hand, we also have uh, this fantastic crucifix from a set of rosary beads, dated to the late 16th, early part of the 17th century, the moment at which Mary Queen of Scots was, was prisoner in Sheffield Castle. And it's testament to a world that Mary shared but was about to disappear, a world of Catholicism, which was about to give way to a world of Protestantism. And that shift from Catholicism to Protestantism would have been one of momentous impact for ordinary people in Sheffield. So in these small objects, we have a transition from one world to another. We have insights into the ordinary lives uh, of individuals. And, and what's critical about that for, for where this site goes next is that it allows us to talk about a kind of different kind of heritage. It's, it's a heritage not just of castles, not just of knights, not just of lords, but also of ordinary everyday people and, and ordinary everyday concerns. And finally, what the study of the archives has also allowed us to do is to build up detailed knowledge of how the site is put together, what the composition of the site is, and that 
knowledge has allowed us to inform the excavations run by Wessex Archaeology in 2018. Well, this looks very different than the Last time we were here, it was a major excavation. Yeah, yeah, it looks very different. You can only now see the scars where the trenches were. In the summer of 2018, Millie Rides led Wessex Archaeology's excavation of the castle site. And I've come back with her to learn what they discovered. You've got sort of 11 trenches around the place. How did you decide where to put those? This was in conversation, in teamwork with the University of Sheffield and you, but also South Yorkshire Archaeological Services and the City Council. It was to inform them uh, about the quantities and the qualities of the archaeological remains. Where are they? Uh, what are they? How many of them uh, are they? Should, can we open something? Can we keep things open? Because archaeology is best preserved untouched. And it was based on you going through the archives from the 1920s and 1950s and trying to find out where are the best places okay. to gain the most of the information. It was absolutely essential. We have got the information about the archive, about the historical research, about the previous excavations, and we brought in everything that commercial archaeology brings together, the specialists, and then we worked together. So it was, it was targeted, it was very much specific to fit into that story so they, they, the council knows what to do or what is the best thing to do um, with the regeneration. Of the 11 trenches dug, perhaps none demonstrates the deep heritage of the site more than trench one. When this trench was open, it was, a, it was like a time capsule, this trench, because here we had everything from the geological layers via medieval cobbled layer and the cementation furnace and cementation furnace related structures. And then when you raise your eyes, you have 20th and 21st oh, century yeah, 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 yeah. Sheffield. So everything, we were standing here and looking at the stratigraphy and you can absolutely see everything. And this is probably the only site in Sheffield where you can do that. But just as excitingly, Millie thinks there is one major new find that adds to the heritage of Castlegate. She believes they've discovered the original 12th century Morton Bailey Castle. I think we did. I think that in, here in Trench 2 we have that, that phase of, of, the, of the existence of the Sheffield Castle uh, because simply we have, um, we have nothing else but a, but a raised, a raised, raised ground. Yes, exactly, uh, in that trench. And everything else around it is is even in later stages respecting it. Nothing, it was not leveled, nothing was built on it, nothing is happening there. So what we have really from your excavation, from our archival work, is a collaboration which produces a, a history of this site from the first Sheffield Castle through to the markets uh, which your machines broke through uh, on that day a year ago uh, when the excavations began. Yeah. So now we know the nature of the heritage of the site, I want to answer the question of how we use it. Carolyn Butterworth from the University School of Architecture and Martin Gorman, Chair of the Friends of Sheffield Castle, have been key partners in a collaboration to put forward ideas for heritage-led regeneration. The history, the heritage, the so social history and the archaeology of a place can give us clues on how to make uh, new designs for buildings which are sort of locally relevant, which will connect with people, which continue the story of a place, really. That's one of the things, Martin, that the, the Friends are really keen on. It's kind of both yeah. protecting the remains of, of the castle, but actually also using them as a, as a kind of resource almost for, for, for the future. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's clear that the, the Sheffield public, the local public, that's what they want to see. Those sorts of ideas are coming through, you know, that they, they don't want to just see something that's, that's low scale. Yeah. It wants to be ambitious. Yeah. We've never really had that opportunity to delve that far into the detail of the archive. So naturally the work that's been done by the university has, has revealed a, a lot more information that we perhaps didn't know before. It's allowed us to, to to, to build a, a picture of Sheffield and tells the story of Sheffield on one site. I mean, one of the, one of the interesting things from, from the archival work that we've done in, in many ways is, is that the kind of questions that our, our people face when, they, when they've confronted Sheffield Castle or, or almost any heritage object is, once you find a castle, what, what do you what do with it? it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, usually the, the case is the archaeology is done, mm. finished, and then development comes over the top of that. And, and nine times out of 10, you, you wouldn't know that that archeology span is actually underneath the building. We work with the Friends on a project called Revealing the Castle, which was to capture a vision of 
incremental development to really start with what was there not to just think of it as a blank slate that you just then put something on top of but you actually start to re reveal and sort of build forward from that point and so the idea was to over time activate the site through festivals and yep. markets yep. And, and, and creative activities Gradually bring it back to life to get people really excited about the future of the place so you can start to think about people living here, people working here, people having their sort of creative practice and business on the site. You do have some fairly substantial development happening, but always respecting that original archaeology and those layers of history. So something distinctive of yeah. this place. Yeah, you know, people might say, oh, let's go down to the, the castle, you know. Yeah. 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 And that can only happen if it comes out of the history of a place, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. with a real understanding of what was there before. So what then is the council's view on how we use this heritage? The university, both civic engagement and the archaeology department have been with us in the Castlegate partnership from the beginning. We worked very closely on the original visioning for the area when it was clear that Castlegate was losing its role. And so there's been this kind of um, really productive relationship helping to build a, a vision and the greater knowledge. Cities need to differentiate themselves and one of the most important ways of doing that is through their heritage and interpreting the heritage and passing it on to new generations. So it's how you mix um, the heritage with some new development and, and new activities that is the, the conundrum that we're all trying to shape. Sheffield Castle, once a dominant landmark in the north of England, was almost completely forgotten. Yet we've discovered a rich heritage that extends from the present all the way back to its medieval origins. But more than that, we're now making that heritage accessible. So here's an example. We're here in the National Video Game Museum with a model of Castlegate as it is. And using augmented reality technology, we're able to put Sheffield Castle as it would have been towards the end of the 15th century, right back in the middle of Castlegate. The castle was once the heart of the city and through our project, through this kind of technology, we can make it the heart of the city again. We can use this heritage to inform regeneration. <laughs>